so if if the mind in our conscious experience is not something that can be reduced to neural activity in the brain then you know and as you say like when you see an apple you are just experiencing the apple as it is it isn't this representation in your brain you're not making it up it's just there your consciousness is a part of the apple and everything else that you experience so what is that then? I, I guess that's always when I when I was reading your work, I I, I I guess I didn't get enough of them into the material. And I, I, I don't know if you get to this point later on in your work. But what is the mind then? You know, if there is even a way to describe it? No, no, no. It, it, that's a very good point. In my view, the mind is just the part of the world we are experiencing at any time. So, for example, right now I am in my room, I see my books, my bookshelves, I see a painting, I see my sofa, and uh, a, a bottle of uh, uh, mm -hmm. orange juice. And I would say that in this moment, my mind is one and the same with these mm -hmm. objects. No more, no less. With all the properties that these objects uh, make available to my body, which are not all of the properties of these objects, but only a subset of the properties, of the physical properties of these objects in the room. For example, surely there must be neutrinos, there must be infrareds, and many ultra waves and many other physical properties I am completely unaware. But there's a subset of physical properties right now, right here, and I would say that my conscious experience is just one and the same with these physical properties. Mm. But let me just say one more thing, that my, my um, explanation is not different from the explanation that uh, neuroscientists have been looking for uh, so far. At least the form of the explanation is just the same. Let me explain. Uh, neuroscientists have been looking for a, a version of what they've been calling the mind, um, the mind body identity theory. In other words, they have been looking for some neural activity that they could uh, claim it was identical with our own conscious experience. So, they've been looking for some physical phenomenon taking place inside the brain that they could say had the right properties to be considered our own conscious experience. So, they would have been perfectly happy to be able to say that a neural activity in my fusiform gyrus in, in the cortex, in the temporal cortex, is identical with my experience of uh, uh, Michelangelo's uh, face, mm -hmm. so to speak. And that explanation would have been uh, accepted by the scientific community. Now, I am just proposing a completely identical explanation. I am also suggesting a physical phenomenon, and I am saying that physical phenomenon is one and the same with my conscious experience. Only that the physical phenomenon I am suggesting is not inside the brain, but is there. Is there in the world. And it has all the properties of my experience. Mm. So, that's an important point, that the form of the explanation I am suggesting is just um, analogous with the explanation that has been so far suggested by neuroscience, only that I uh, propose to look for a different uh, uh, physical phenomenon, to look elsewhere. 